Welcome to study number six in the book of Hebrews. We are uh, working our way through one of the greatest books in the New Testament, uh, a book that kind of brings everything from the Old Testament together. Glad you're along with us for the ride. Hope you enjoy uh, today's study. In today's study, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, through Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 8. And we're going to try to answer a few different questions here. Uh, number one, from chapter 5, verses 11 through 14, what's the writer's Hebrews, com the writer's complaint, excuse me, about his readers? And what does he imply are the conditions of spiritual growth? And by these standards, considering how long I've been a Christian, how long you've been a Christian, by this time, where should you be? Where should I be? Second question, taken from chapter 6. Verses 1 through 8, what teaching constitutes the foundation of the gospel? And what reason is given here for not laying this foundation again? And what were the only possibilities now open to such people? Well, let's look at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, through chapter 6 and verse 8. If you have your Bible, if not, you can look at it on the screen here with me. We have much to say about this, verse 11, but it's hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone else to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who, by contrast, have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Hebrews chapter 6, Therefore let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment, and God permitting, we will do so. It's impossible for those who have once been enlightened and who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance, because to their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain often falling on it and that produces a crop useful to those whom it is, whom it is farmed receives the blessings of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end it will be burned. Let's look back again at question number one. What is the writer's complaint about his readers, and what does he imply are the conditions of spiritual growth? And by these standards, consider how long you've been a Christian, and by this time, where ought you and I to be? Well, the writers of Hebrew, writer of Hebrews, and we say writer of Hebrews because we don't know who wrote the book. Uh, the writer of Hebrews complains uh, that his readers still haven't matured in the faith. They still need milk. They haven't learned anything. Uh, they should be eating solid food by now. Nothing is more depressing in ministry uh, than to see what should be mature Christians that are still living on spiritual milkshakes just because of their inability to cope with the full reality of the Word of God. Where, you know, where are you at today? Are you still drinking spiritual milkshakes? Do you still just want that to taste good and sweet and, you know, doesn't do you much good, doesn't help you grow, doesn't help you develop? Or are you ready to take on some bigger things in the Lord? I think maybe since you are tuned into this uh, webcast that uh, you're ready for some bigger things in the Lord. And praise God for that. Question number two, chapters from chapter six, first eight verses. What teaching constitutes the foundation of the gospel? And what reason is given here for not laying that foundation all over again? And what were the only possibilities now open uh, to such people? Well, the foundation of the gospel is repentance from sin. After sin is forgiven, then you have these building blocks of baptism, doctrinal teachings on the resurrection, the judgment to come. Those all come into play. The writer of Hebrews is not trying to lay down that foundation again uh, of, re of repentance and resurrection and, and uh, coming judgment because he wants his hearers to now move on and move on to some more mature discussions of the faith without maturity uh, it's, it's almost uncertain uh, it's almost certain excuse me that thorns and the thistles of the world are going to come in and destroy the seeds of faith you have got to be growing in Christ 
if there is not growth, there is a problem. If there is no fruit, is there any root? If there is no root, then there's going to be death. So I would encourage you to stay grounded in the Word of God. Continue to study the Bible with us at Search the Scriptures. I hope you have a fantastic day, the rest of your day. God bless.